St. John's University and the College of St. Benedict's, located in central Minnesota, are historically known as two of the most haunted campuses in the world. We decided to talk to some of their students. Here are their stories. I never believed it, but I went up in that tower and there's this blue light coming from nowhere. So I don't know now. Like, I really don't know. Two monks, when they were building the Stalmaris Chapel, put the uh, church bell in a rowboat and were rowing across uh, Lake Sagatogan. And uh, the boat either broke apart or it was too much weight and it uh, sunk and the two monks both drowned and uh, supposedly the bell rings at odd times of the night when there's no other bells that should be ringing. And uh, there have been numerous reports of people hearing this odd bell coming from the lake that nobody can really explain why. When we were out in front of the Abbey, they pointed out the blue light. And they've told us that um, there's actually been an exorcism there. I, don't, I haven't seen it, but I would believe it because they also go on telling that uh, when the power goes out, that light's always on. Any time of night, you'll always see it. It's just this blue light that just is, it's just like a star, it's just always there, but no one can explain why. There was a girl living on the second floor of Corona, and she killed herself. And then there was another girl that moved into the same room, and then she killed herself. And then to like cleanse the room, they moved a nun into it, and the nun committed suicide too. So now it's sealed off because the room's like haunted. Ever since I've been at St. Ben's, I've had some very interesting encounters with the ghostly world, I guess you could say here. The weirdest one, freshman year, I lived in Aurora, above a room that's blocked off in Aurora, I don't really know what went on in there, but uh, I lived above that room that no one's allowed to live in. And um, at night when we'd be like, well, when I'd be like, trying to sleep, um, you would hear like scratching noises on the wall and then like it would progressively get worse and like turn into pounding noises. And at first I just thought, oh, it's my neighbors like trying to trick me because it was only like midnight. 1 a.m. so I maybe thought they were just like trying to play practical jokes but then when you get into it more it kept happening more and more and uh, we, then we just asked him about it we're like what's your deal like why are you pounding on our wall like when we're trying to sleep and our neighbor was like oh no that's not us like um, her, she was saying her roommate goes to bed super early because she just doesn't like to stay up late I guess and then she's like yeah, and I go to bed, and so I was like, okay, well, maybe they're just lying, but then it just got worse and worse, and then it would be like 4 a.m., and you'd be hearing those noises, and there's no way anybody's awake at 4 a.m., so we just kind of accepted that whatever presence was in that room didn't want me to sleep. I think my most uh, prominent experience with uh, the supernatural or the spiritual would be at the monastic cemetery over at St. Ben's. Um, every now and again, when, when I'm stressed or or otherwise uh, can't handle life as it is. I just go and I, I walk through the cemetery and, and there's just a very real and uh, uh, a very real presence there that I'm not alone. There was one specific example. Um, last fall, I was having a very uh, stressful time and everything was building up. Uh, and I, I walked out to the cemetery and my friend, Sister Janice, had just died um, a few months prior. So I sat at her grave and, and uh, I, I, I talked and and I, I just kept talking, and, and I had a very, very real sense that, that Sister Janice was talking back to me, um, and that she was conversing with me, and that she was telling me it was all going to be okay. Um, and then I got a, a, a very real sense of peace uh, that came over me. Uh, and I, I can't believe that that was just coincidental. So I've heard a few stories, I mean I've heard there's three main ones that go around. There's the blue light story, you know, in St. John's on top of that, uh, the spire thing. Uh, there's the Aurora Hall, 
that one's as unfortunate as it is. Still, I don't know, I can still kind of shrug that one off too. And then there's the bell in Lake Sag. And let's, let's, let's start. Let me just start. I've been wanting to voice this for quite some time, so I'm glad you came to me. Let's start with the blue light one. I've done the plunge, which is where you live with the monks for a weekend and experience that type of monastic lifestyle. Um, to silence the theories of some of the other students, they took us up there. And to be honest, it's just a bug light, guys. So, you know, everyone calm down on that one a bit. And the only thing that was up there besides crushed spirits was a ton of flies. As for the Aurora Hall, it's an unfortunate story, definitely, like, but I don't know, I have pigeons that live outside my window that make a scratching noise and I'm not considered that they're any type of ghosts or something, so I don't know, the, ev the lack of evidence, I'm compelled to kind of just shrug it off. And the Lake Sag thing, as unfortunate as it is, the bell that they hear uh, could, one, be the banner. I don't know, that's just like my obvious answer, I guess, that thing rings every 15 minutes. And could just be a reverberation of hearing that bell because I hear it so often. Ding, what, you hear it? There it is now. But seriously, I think those three theories can be put to rest. One, lack of evidence, and two, they're solely based on superstition. The more uh, in touch a person is with the spiritual, the more likely they are to be communicated to by the spiritual realm. So it would be it would make perfect sense for me, uh, from a theological standpoint, um, for there to be plenty of ghosts or spirits or uh, or saints or however you want to call it on these campuses, because uh, you know with two monastic communities, uh, in the height of their their existence, Saint Ben's had. 1,200 nuns running around, and the abbey probably had about 800 monks, uh, most of whom were priests. Um, so in a setting where there are these people who are very much intact with, uh, and very much in communication with the spiritual world, it only makes sense that, that the spiritual world would be comfortable getting in contact with, uh, with these campuses. And that might seem like soft theology, um, or I, I think that a lot of times, you know, the supernatural or ghosts or, or whatever um, sort of gets a bad rap in the, uh, the academic world. Um, but again, I think if you chip beneath the surface um, and sort of uh, reattune Christian theology, um, it, it makes perfect sense to me. There's so many different stories that have been told about the bell, the blue room, the little girl that drowned. All, one of these has to be true. Everything, is, rumors are based off some form of truth. So do I believe in some of these ghost stories? Oh yeah, I believe in some of these ghost stories. They're, it's like, it's hard not to believe some of the truth in this. You know, you can like ignore them and be like, oh, those are just, oh, whatever, like coincidences. But I definitely think that there's paranormal, paranormal activity. I personally do not believe in ghosts or demons. Like. I think if you ask for it, like if you have like a Ouija board and stuff, then you will like communicate with the devil or whatever. But I don't think that ghosts just come to people that are good. I believe that there are supernatural beings on this campus uh, from the large grouping of uh, men who are very spiritual here on campus, uh, that some part of their being will remain behind either in a building or in the woods or something they really loved. I believe that they will definitely some part of them will definitely be here and people will experience it as either a ghost or a supernatural experience and I, I definitely believe that there um, are supernatural beings on this campus. My belief in ghosts, um, so I, f I feel there's a distinction between ghosts and spirits. So there's spirits but they're not essentially out to haunt anyone. I think that's just a ludicrous idea. So maybe, maybe they're all myth, maybe they're uh, more real than we'd like to admit. Uh, but I, I don't suspect that we'll have a concrete answer until, uh, until maybe we join them. Although it is difficult to scientifically prove hauntings on these campuses, the overwhelming amount of historical stories, personal experiences, 
and theological reasonings to back them up. It is safe to say that events beyond this world are happening here. For what reason? We may never know. <laughs>